Many of us do not have a real understanding of why it is necessary to follow the laws as laid down by God in the scriptures. When we have no understanding, no conviction, it is very difficult for us not just to accept, but more importantly, to put them into practice. Laws actually are not against freedom. Laws are meant to protect true freedom. So we must not misunderstand the purpose of the laws. Of course, this is where legalism comes in. When we look at the laws in a very narrow way, when we just try to fulfill the laws blindly and slavishly, just like the religious leaders during the time of Jesus, that kind of observance of the laws do not set us free. So we must understand the laws are given to protect those who are weak in exercise freedom. The laws are given to those who are ignorant of the truth. The Ten Commandments given by God, they are meant to be guidelines in teaching us how we should live our life meaningfully and freely so that we will not hurt ourselves and we will not hurt others, so that we will not be enslaved once again to our fears, to our passions. These Ten Commandments are divided into two categories. The first three commandments are focused on giving absolute obedience, reverence to God. The other seven commandments deal with the moral implications in our relationship with our fellow men. And it's good for us to take note. The first three commandments put God as the center of our lives. Without God, the moral laws cannot stand. You can understand the problem today. Why today the moral laws are being rejected by many people in the world? Because they no longer believed in God. When you don't put God as a center, the absolute, then there is no basis for moral laws. Moral laws, therefore, will keep on changing according to one's preference, to one's context. And that is the reason why it's so difficult to speak of morality into this world. And so it is good for us, once again, to put God as a center because otherwise we go after false gods. And that is what God is concerned. The false gods refers not just to images but to the wrong things in life, to the illusions that we worship. It could be money, it could be power, whatever it is. And why do we keep the Sabbath holy? So that we will have a right relationship, a right balance. First with God and then with our families and our loved ones. As for the other seven commandments, you notice, the emphasis is first and foremost on family life. First and foremost, to give reverence to the elderly, to our parents. Because they are the ones who have taken care of us and we are called to look after them. If we want our children to look after us, when we are old. And we must also be concerned about protecting marriages. Again, protection of family life. Marriages, divorce, all these things, if not well understood, can destroy the individuals and destroy the family. Not only protection of family, the next one is protection of life itself. Again, if you do not hold life as sacred as coming from God, then, of course, then we resort to abortion, euthanasia, all these things because we have no more respect for life. So life is sacred. But to protect life is not just the physical life. It's even the reputation of our brothers and sisters, the integrity. That is why the commandment also forbid us to bear false weakness against our neighbours. And finally, we are told that we also must avoid coveting the property the things of others. Now, all these regulations and laws, what is the purpose? So that we live a harmonious life, 
a life that is lived in harmony with God will lead to a harmonious life with our brothers and sisters. All of us, we want peace. We want unity. But if we don't want to follow the laws and everybody is using his or her own laws, how can you ever find unity in the world? That is why today the world speaks about unity, but I don't think it's possible because everybody makes himself the God. 